In this recording, we look at trigonometric integrals, where the integrand is a power of sine x multiplied by a power of cosine x, where both of them are in fact raised to even powers. In this situation, the following three identities are useful in reducing the exponents m and n. And once we've done that, we usually can use integration by substitution or other methods to evaluate the integral. So let's have a look at this in the context of an example. Suppose we wanted to find the integral of sine squared x times cos squared x dx. So when we're integrating sine squared x times cos squared x with respect to x, which one of these identities will help us? It's actually the first one, because sine squared x times cos squared x is just the same as sine x times cos x, all squared. So once we've written it that way, we could then replace it with a half sine 2x. And when we're wanting the integral of that all squared with respect to x. But does this make things any simpler for us? Well, one obvious simplification we could do from here is a half squared is a quarter, and a quarter being a constant, we could just take that outside of the integral sign. And I'm just going to write sine 2x all squared in the more usual form sine squared 2x. That might not help terribly much, but it makes it a bit simpler to see what we're looking at here. Now sine squared of 2x, at this stage it's good to try a substitution. So we'll let u be equal to 2x, so that that will become a quarter times the integral of sine squared u. But if we're going to rewrite this in terms of u, we also need to rewrite dx in terms of du. So how will that work? Well, if u is 2x, then du dx is 2. So therefore, du is 2 dx. But we just have 1 dx here. So rearranging that, dx is equal to du divided by 2, which is better written as a half du. So that Substituting in u and du, this becomes 1 quarter times the integral of sine squared u, 1 half du. And again, that 1 half there can just come outside the integral sign as well, so that we get a quarter times a half is 1 eighth times the integral of sine squared u du. At this stage, we can just go back a step, and we see that sine squared x can be rewritten as a half times 1 minus cos 2x. Therefore, sine squared u will just be a half times 1 minus cos 2u. Writing that in, this becomes an eighth times the integral of a half, 1 minus cos 2u du. You're starting to see why I like to take care of these fractions as they appear, otherwise it can get quite messy. And 8 times a half is 1 16th. So let's just take that outside the integral sign as well. So we now have 1 16th times the integral of 1 minus cos 2u du. And this now looks a lot more manageable. We can now integrate this. This now becomes 1 16th times u minus, and this part here, I'm just going to keep the 1 16th out the front as a common factor for now, cos 2u, that will become a half sine 2u when we integrate that, and then plus c. And I'll just close the brackets and write the constant on the end as 1 16th times an arbitrary constant is just another arbitrary constant anyway. Expanding out those brackets, that's just going to become 1 on 16 multiplied by u minus 1 on 32 sine 2u plus c. Are we finished?
almost, but we still need to rewrite this in terms of x. And recall that we had u equal to 2x. Therefore, our expression here becomes 1 divided by 16 times 2x minus 1 divided by 32 sine of 2 lots of 2x plus c. That'll cancel and simplify a bit. 1 on 16 times 2x, that just becomes x divided by 8 minus 1 on 32 times sine of 4x plus c. So here I've just written that out in relation to the integral we we're actually working out. So this shows that when we're working out the integral of a function where the integrand is even powers of sine and cos x multiplied together, the rearrangements of a double angle formula, in fact, that we started looking at, which were these ones here, some combination of one or more of these is often very helpful, followed by then integration by substitution when necessary.